malam ini kita akan ada live ya Rangga ya iya. bersama kita akan Kenon live Labar. Ke, bersama Kenoran Labar salah satu konduktor yang cukup terkenal juga <tuh> dan mungkin sebentar kita akan tanya-tanya mengenai latar belakang dan pengalaman-pengalaman dia mungkin juga teman-teman bisa uh, ikut bertanya dan nggak apa-apa kalau mau bertanya dalam bahasa Indonesia juga nanti kita akan bantu untuk terjemahkan ke Cameron Labar nanti mohon pertanyaannya teman-teman jangan ditanya di kolom komentar nanti tolong pakai aplikasi pakai fitur uh, question ada ada kotak kecil di sebelah kanan kolom komentar nanti bisa pakai fitur itu untuk bertanya ya. kotak dengan uh, tanda tanya ya. <tuh> nah kita sebentar lagi akan uh, menjambungkan ke Cameron Labar Bentar, oh ini dia. Udah. Ding, ding, ding. Oke, sambil menyambungkan. Sambil menunggu. <coughs> Mungkin ada teman-teman yang udah pernah ketemu sama kameran labar ya? Di... Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Wow. <laughs> hello, wow. hello. I can't recognize you at first. <laughs> I'm right. Yeah, I have, uh, I have... I've grown a beard through all of this, so. <laughs> <laughs> But you look great. You look really, really oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Good to see you both. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Uh, it's a little bit of a rainy day here in Springfield, Missouri in the U.S. Uh, but it's a, uh-huh. nice, uh, it's a nice, beautiful morning. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> so it's exactly, exactly the opposite uh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just finished our dinner. Oh, <laughs> uh, nice, nice. And I haven't had breakfast just yet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how are you doing? Uh, so we, are, we are great. Yeah, we are great. Yeah. We are great. Yeah, we are now um, just working for our uh, virtual choir. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah we are doing we, that now. We, uh, we receive uh, already... Around yeah, more, more than three thousand and five hundred videos. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard work. <laughs> yeah, and then you just put them all together, and it comes out perfectly, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So, Cameron, uh, how's the situation in Missouri now? Right now, during the you know, this pandemic. Yeah, in Missouri, we're doing okay, especially especially in our region in southwest Missouri. Uh, Missouri's three largest cities are Kansas City, St. Louis, and Springfield. And we're in Springfield, where Missouri State University is. We have about 26,000 students uh, at Missouri State. Um, yeah. uh, it's certainly been a challenge, and we've had a few, certainly a few COVID-19 cases But things seem to be really leveling off here in our area, and we have very limited yeah. cases in Springfield. So, yeah, so our, yeah, our economy is is in the process of opening back up, and uh, yeah. of course, we're not able to gather in large groups. But people can be in in groups of say 25 or so. Yeah. Um, and uh, restaurants are starting to open up with dis- distancing requirements and whatnot. Ooh. So it's it's uh, it, it's okay. You know, it's it's a very It's a very regionalized thing right now, it seems like. Uh, and a lot of the big national and international news is coming from our yeah. major yeah, densely yeah. populated areas uh, worldwide. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we're, we just happen to be fortunate here where our population density is, uh, is a bit lower than some other places. So it, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's just about maybe as good as it could be, given the circumstances. So how yeah. are things there uh, going? There? Yeah. We will just stay at home. Yeah. We just stay at home. Yeah. Uh, But it seems, it seems like um, the situation is getting better here, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah but we'd rather yeah. to just to stay, just to stay at home. Yeah. 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 It's tough to figure out what to do <laughs> with all this time. Yeah. Uh, at home, I, I don't go. find myself. I don't find that I'm any any less busy for some reason. Uh, it's just a matter yeah. of doing doing a lot of different things. Yeah. Oh. Are you work out? <laughs> uh, I try to. I usually I usually go to the gym, <laughs> and I can't do that right now. Uh, but I've I've been cycling quite a bit, and uh, it, theoretically I've been running. Although I don't know that that's been actually happening. Uh, yeah. It's nice. So yeah. so Cameron, 
during this pandemic, maybe you you already see that uh, there is a, a lot of workshop online. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you think about online workshop during this pandemic? Well, I think I think we're doing we're all sort of doing the best that we can with uh, with what with the circumstances that we have, uh, and I really appreciate everyone's effort to. Uh, to create opportunity, especially, I mean, the, what, what you're doing with the Bandung Coral Society is, is, is truly, uh, truly admirable uh, with, Thank you. with the, <laughs> different, uh, yeah, with the different guests that you're having on. Can you see me okay? Yeah. It seems like I'm kind of dark. Is it, is that true? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Is that better? Ah, yeah, that's better. Okay, let me turn that way a little bit. Um, okay, sure. And then, this is actually my first Instagram live Ever? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Welcome to Instagram, sir. <laughs> so let me just try. Oops, that's yeah, my plan. That's okay. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. And there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of text popping up. Is that normal? Sorry. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. Oh, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, okay. Got, I'm back. I'm back. Um. No, I, I think I think the online workshops are, are you know, it, it's about as good as we can do. But, you know, the nature yeah. of what we do, it, it absolutely requires the human interaction and it, and it requires listening to each other in a live scenario. So um, yeah. I, I think I think we can we can almost we can almost try to do too much of this. Yeah, in, in a way. And, and and it's going to be different for everybody. But I think we need to, need to allow ourselves to take a break from this. Uh, uh, you know, um, effort to like get you know, sort of be normal and understand that it's not normal, uh, and maybe just just go walk outside the house or 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 just read a book or do something totally different that you maybe wouldn't otherwise yeah. have time to do. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm finding that that uh, for for our groups, we've tried to connect online quite a bit, and and it's. It's great to see each other, of course, but it's certain, yes. certainly it, it kind of gets old in a way where you're just just constantly connecting through a screen, um, and I, I don't know any, I don't have any good solution around it. It, it, it. Although it does make me appreciate so much our our ability to be together uh, and to appreciate the seemingly mundane and the seemingly normal, uh, our regular yeah. rehearsal and our regular music. Uh, I think for all of us, we'll never take that for granted now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what what are you doing with your teaching work right now? Because we know that we cannot uh, see each other, see meet your students or your singers. Right, right. Um, you know, with the uh, with our students at Missouri State University, we have uh, tried to connect them with each other uh, is the main thing. And then use the opportunity like, like you're doing in a way to connect them with, yeah. uh, yeah. the greater choral world where we wouldn't yeah. otherwise maybe normally have that opportunity to do so. So we've had, um, uh, various folks come in and chat with them. Uh, one of the best ones we had was Sean Kirchner in, uh, from LA who was with us on a, on a group zoom call and, uh, played piano yeah. for us and sort of talked just talked us through many things musically. It was so refreshing to hear some actual music played by someone, um, yeah. and different discussions with, with some various conductors from across the world, uh, in, in our zoom calls. Uh, however, I think what, what, what I found is the most important thing is for our students <clears throat> and our singers to connect with each other. The entire last week of our, because our, our semester just wrapped up this last week now. Uh, yeah. Our, our entire last week, um, uh, uh, the Missouri State Chorale, they just wanted to be together and talk about some memories and and uh, various experiences that they've that they've had over the uh, over the last year or two or three. So we're trying to just maintain some semblance of community. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as best we possibly can, connecting, connecting with each other, making phone calls, uh, you know, writing letters the old-fashioned way, <laughs> sending things in the mail, uh, you know, that w just anything and everything to connect, connect with each other. Because I think first and foremost, it's our, it's our sense of community. Second, it's music making, of course. Uh, and third, yeah. maybe, and, 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 and lastly, it's performing for other people. I think, I think what we're learning mm -hmm. about the choral art through this 
is that's the order of priority for us. It's that human connection, it's the musical connection to each other, and then it's the presentation of that music to the world. That's the last thing we need to be able to put back together, uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We agree about that, sir. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe our followers want to know more about you. Can you tell us yeah, sure. about your... Yeah, can you tell us about your education background in choral music? Yeah, I I have had a love for choir and and singing ever since I was uh, a young boy. Uh, growing up, uh, my family was very supportive of music, and our mm -hmm. our school system was very supportive of the arts. So I just sort of always grew up doing it, and then I had a, a tremendous experience in mm -hmm. um, in sort of a. Uh, a big choir festival, similar to the Indonesian Youth Choir, um, uh, really, and and then that sort of triggered my interest in making making choral music at the highest possible level. So I went to college. I went actually. I went to university at um, Missouri State University, where I am actually on faculty now, uh, and studied with uh, Dr. Guy Webb there, and uh, head of. Uh, had a variety of wonderful experiences, toured abroad for the first time. That sort of triggered my interest in travel and in choir singing and putting that all together. Uh, and then I went to the University of North Texas for both my master's and my doctoral degrees, um, studying with Hal Gibbons, Jerry McCoy, uh, David Itkin, and Richard Sparks. Um, then I joined the faculty at, uh, at Lee University in Eastern Tennessee, Uh, state that borders Missouri, but quite a, quite a ways from here. Uh, and and during that time, I had the opportunity to study with Simon Carrington, uh, who is one of the founding members of the King Singers, and also the renowned oh. composer and arranger <laughs> Alice Parker. Um, and uh, and that really was transformative. And then about uh, seven years ago, took uh, took a position at Missouri State as director of choral studies here, and it's just been a wonderful journey. Uh, ever since we've been afforded so many unique travel opportunities. Uh, I've had the opportunity to visit uh, Indonesia, I think one of the greatest countries on the planet. Uh, oh, wow. truly. Uh, <laughs> Thank and, you for saying uh, that. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's one thing to have a beautiful country in terms of the, the geography, but it's another thing to have a beautiful country in terms of the heart of the people. And that's the sense that I get uh, in Indonesia is that the is that the people sort of represent who the country is there, uh, at least the choral people. I don't know about everybody else, yeah. but uh, at least the, the choir folks are wonderful. Yeah. So Thank that's you. a little bit about my, about my background. I, I, love, uh, I love choir singing. I love, I love getting people together to sing and eat great food and travel. Uh, <laughs> those are sort of many things that I, I love doing, or three things <laughs> I love doing. Yeah. So when actually you realized that choir is your choice, And why choir? Uh, so in college, I started with a couple of different majors. One was musical theater, uh, where I was going to do maybe some Broadway-style shows and whatnot. And another was uh, vocal performance, performing, of course, you know, singing and whatnot, uh, solo-wise. But through my experience in choir, there's just something so unique and special about the ensemble music making. It was through... I think that college choral experience where I decided I'm not in this for uh, for myself, and, and that's perfectly fine, but I'm in this in order to empower others to be the best versions of themselves <laughs> through this beautiful art form. Uh, I just, um, I, I, I just, you know, you, you can't, you really can't describe the feeling you have when, when yeah. you're together making that same art all at the same time. So uh, once I realized that, it, that, getting other people to, to uh, you know, make, make the music and, to, and, and using the music as a vehicle to bring them together, first with themselves and then with each other, that just was so transformational for me. Uh, you know, just that whole experience of learning what that looks like and what that would be like. I just, I just fell in love and, and wanted to sort of chase that dream as fast as I possibly could um, and trying to make music at the highest possible level. Great, yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, uh, same here. Because, uh, uh, we also uh, come from university choir, and uh, yeah, there is change as uh, choir uh, change our life. Yeah, <laughs> choir change yeah. our life. It, yeah, it, it, it does. Uh, 
yeah attitude mental and something like that I think. and is it the music or is it the people it's certainly both but i think the people have to come first yeah 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 so may uh back to your university that you work so can you tell us about your work in the university and what is your responsibility there and what is your specific lecture you give in the university Yeah, so I'm uh, the director of choral studies at Missouri State University, uh, which is a university of about 26,000 students. We have uh, mm. a few hundred, uh, a few hundred music majors in the in the university. Folks studying to be performers, educators, composers, uh, people that are that are going to go on and work in the music business, all kinds of things, um, and uh, and we have. Uh, we have eight choirs at Missouri State, four oh. sort of core choirs, if you will. There's the chorale, which I conduct, uh, men's chorus. I also conduct that group, women's chorus and choral union. Then we have uh, our chamber choir, uh, which is a project-based group. Uh, our grand chorus is is the choir that does works with, with symphony orchestra. So that's all our four core choirs combined. And then we have uh, a couple of auxiliary groups, uh, the multicultural ensemble, Uh, and the gospel choir, uh, which were both very active in our community. Uh, so I also teach the graduate choral conducting sequence uh, at, uh, at Missouri State and work with our graduate conductors. We have a unique uh, certificate program in graduate choral, in, in choral studies. So it's, it's for people with an undergraduate already. And then they come to Missouri State in the U.S. and study for nine months for, for like a sort of a year term for nine months and are immersed in the American choral scene, uh, take choir, choral literature, a conducting class, maybe an, an arranging class uh, and are just here sort of living the life of an American choral musician. We just launched that last year and it's been received quite well. Uh, that's a, our sort of nine month to one year program. And then we have our full, fully fledged graduate, uh, graduate degree in choral music, uh, but our choirs are very active and they're all, they all operate at a high level. Uh, our chorale travels uh, quite regularly. Um, we, we tour all over the world. We've been the last few years to South Africa uh, for an 18-day mm -hmm. tour uh, in 2016. We went to Iceland, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden uh, in 2018. And in 2020, uh, we were scheduled to go, and for, uh, unfortunately this was canceled, we were scheduled to go, actually we were going to be leaving today. Uh, for South Korea, uh, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Uh, so, uh, so I'm able to be here with you because actually that was, that was canceled, <laughs> of course. Uh, and um, uh, let's see here. What about, uh, also about Missouri State? It's, a, it's an, incredible, an incredible place where the, the student dynamic is really, um, uh, it's, there's a, a certain palpable energy, I think, among the student population. And students really come first here. So the The, the faculty and the staff are so student-centered. Uh, it was what really drew me to come and serve on the faculty here. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a places, uh, universities can be great places of research, uh, and, and, are, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we have, our certainly, uh, we have certainly plenty of research here as well, but it's really more about, about student-centered endeavors and activities, which, uh, which is wonderful, of course. So. Um, Yeah, that's a little bit about what we have going on at Missouri State. Um, yeah, uh, any, any questions on that or any things I'm leaving out on, uh, on my current position or, or uh, what's going on here? Uh, uh, right now, do you still have schedule to teach at the university that we know maybe your university is closed now because of the pandemic? Do you still uh, sorry. have... Could you say that again? Do you have, I mean that, do you still have a schedule to teach at your university right now by doing online teaching or something like that to your student? Uh, yeah, yeah, very good question. So our, our semester here in the, in the Midwest usually wraps up right around now. So this last week was our finals week and then commencement, our commencement ceremony for the spring would have been yesterday. Uh, and so now, now we're moving into our summer term. Um, so in mid-March, we went all online with all of our course offerings. So we've been doing that uh, online teaching stuff. Uh, it's been fairly, 
I mean, you know, forgiven the circumstances, it's been fine, but it's been fairly miserable otherwise trying to sort of, you know, create some sort of choir experience. It's just, uh, it's just horrible. I can't wait to be back together. Uh, but we've done the best we can with the, with the circumstances. And then um, our summer choral institute has been canceled. We have a, a week-long summer, summer program for uh, high school age students, basically. Uh, that was canceled, and then our university is planning at this point to um, move back to in-person offerings uh, for the fall semester in August. Uh, so, uh, you know, we may have some different distancing requirements, but the thing is we have nearly three months before that changes, and this pandemic has been with us for about five or six months or so. So yeah. in three months' time, hopefully things will continue to change for the better. Uh, I think right now, yeah, at least for so. our calendar, yeah. it's entirely too soon to be making some sort of grand declarations about what we're going to be doing three months from now, uh, given that we've only been together, or we've only been with this virus for five or six <laughs> months or so. Yeah, great, great. Oh, okay, that's great. So uh, maybe um, for now, we, we, we know that uh, in the internet is very viral about the virtual choir all around the world doing yeah. that so yeah, it's very so fun many. with the chorister now because uh all we can do is singing with, in virtual choir so maybe uh what do you think about the virtual choir that so many choir all over the world did you know i i, I really uh i really appreciate virtual choir certainly for what it is it's it's, it's a way for us to do some music somehow Uh, I, I certainly don't think it's it's at all a replacement for choir. I mean, we all we all know that. Um, you know, I wish I wish it had a different name. Uh, uh, so I think it was Ethan Sperry uh, called called it. Uh, maybe it was one of his colleagues, but he called it a virtual distance sing, uh, which I thought was quite <laughs> creative. <laughs> so it's, it's it is singing. Uh, I to totally agree that it is singing and it's virtual. But I don't know that it's choir. I, I wish it wasn't. And this is totally fine. I mean, of course, this is, it is what it is now. It's, it's called virtual yeah. choir. I wish it wasn't called choir because choir is, a, I think, requires that we are together uh, uh, singing and listening and making, making experience uh, otherwise. Um, you know, I think, I think from the outside perspective, uh, <clears throat> I, I hope that people understand that it's just not the same and it's not acceptable to... Yeah keep doing virtual choir after we're all able to not do virtual choir. Uh, I, you know, we've all been on Zoom calls after Zoom calls after Zoom calls. And if I hear the word <laughs> Zoom after this pandemic, uh, I would agree with my, one of my colleagues to say, I'm probably going to burn down my house. Uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, it, 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 I'm just, I'm just so over it uh, and ready to move back. So, you know, I think virtual choir is fine and, and we, it's something to do for right now. But as soon as we can stop doing it, we've got to move on and, and get back together in some semblance of, uh, of, yeah. of real life singing. And, and other people maybe feel differently about this, but, uh, but uh, you know, for, for my taste, I'm going to probably wait <laughs> uh, okay. for, a little bit, uh, for a little bit longer uh, before, before we do something like that. Uh, and, and again, I, I certainly support everyone doing it. And and in, in many communities, it's a it's a really great way to to yeah. do again to do something. Um, yeah. But gosh, it's just you know, it's just not choir. I mean, don't you think it's just um, yeah? It doesn't feel real enough to me uh, yeah. in a way. But. I so appreciate it, you know, you know, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. That's a, that's a terrible answer, probably. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, Cameron, uh, I, want to know, uh, I want to know more about your activities in Coral, American Coral Director Associations. Yeah. So I've been uh, a member of the uh, American Choral Directors Association oh, since I was a student long ago. So I've uh, been a part of the organization for quite some time. Um, I've had the opportunity to serve, to serve our local uh, area here, uh, advising the, the Missouri Choral Directors Association, with it, which is a subset of ACDA. Um, and then I've also had the opportunity to represent uh, 
ACDA twice as part of the International Conductors Exchange Program yeah. uh, as, as a fellow to China. Uh, I can't remember the date now, maybe 2015 or so, uh, 2014, 2015, and then to Sweden uh, after that. So there were maybe seven to 10 of us uh, from ACDA that went abroad both different, uh, different, uh, different years to those different places. Uh, and, and then I've served um, a couple of different national conferences, uh, helping out with some logistics and whatnot. Uh, but it's a tremendous organization that, um, that sort of is the, you might think of it as the curator of the art form uh, in, in the U.S., serving conductors and serving choral musicians uh, in the U.S. and certainly, uh, certainly abroad as well. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe you can share us about the empowering choral artistry. Yeah, I'd love to love to chat with you about that. It really, it's more of just a kind of a, a talking point or a philosophy uh, that mm -hmm. I think is is worth is worth discussing and worth worth opening up about. Um, uh, I have a, a choral series through Walton Music, and I was trying to come up with a name, uh, sort of a name for that or a tagline, if you will. And that's the one that that really came came to me as something that is everything that I wanted to sort of promote and, and to talk about is, is, uh, is obviously choral music empowering others in some way or another, whether that's a composer, an arranger, a choral conductor, a choral singer, uh, somebody in the in industry, and then, and then that, that degree of artistry. What does it mean to be an artist? Obviously, we need to be technicians, and, and I think having a, a baseline of fundamentals in place and, and basic uh, sort of music foundations is an absolute must, but I think I think uh, being an artist is sort of what we're what we're sort of going for, and that de that takes I think a degree of of curiosity. Uh, the other thing I, I mean this is not something I would I would suggest as a tagline, but it, you could also say you know you want to empower choral curiosity. Uh, what is what does it mean to be a choral singer? What does it mean to really listen to somebody next to you and respond? Or what does it mean to listen to somebody next to you breathe together and truly sing together? Um, uh, in terms of conducting, when when I teach conducting, what I'm trying to do with with conducting students is often just remove so many things from their gesture and remove so many things from his or her sort of habit base to where we've got just the basic foundation. And that then I think allows the choral singer to, to do what they want to do and to do what, what, what they feel is right. Uh, obviously it's being guided by the conductor, but not instructed. So it's, a more, it's more of a, a guided experience rather than I'm telling you exactly how it goes. So, so my role is to, is to bring out what's inside of every single singer in the choir, not to tell them what's inside of them uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's that collaboration. Uh, let me go back to conducting there. So, so when I'm thinking about conducting, I'm thinking about what's the least amount of stuff I can do to allow the most amount of artistry to come out of the choir uh, yeah. to, to where I'm, I'm sort of just almost removing myself from the equation. Now, when I need to get back in and step in and, and, and show something uh, delicate or even show something forceful or s show something uh, rubato or, or, or mm -hmm. something needs to be changed, then I can, I can go back in there and do that. Um, but so many of, of my favorite musical memories have come when the choir is collaboratively and collectively making some incredible decisions, sort of 50 people at a time. It's just amazing what's, what's possible. Uh, when I kind of step a little bit back and not be so sort of instructive and and uh, sort of sculptor like there, uh, yeah. So those are those are some initial thoughts on on empowering choral artistry. It's a matter of uh, of encouraging and and creating a sense of curiosity. I think it was maybe Mahler uh, who who talked about you know one of the worst things, or maybe it was von Karajan. I don't recall now. One of the worst things I can do to the orchestra is to show them exactly where to play, because if I show them exactly where to play, they'll never actually play together. 
And that's a really unique idea. So if I show them exactly what to do, they won't, they won't actually do it together because each one of those orchestra players is trying to get inside my head and figure out what I think they should do. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. if I show them maybe not quite exactly every single time where to play, they have to think and they have to listen and they have to be curious and they have to experience artistry. And at that moment, at those moments, they truly play together. I'm not promoting that we, we have unclear gesture by any means or that we're not delivering clear information as conductors, but I'm, I am sort of suggesting that we, we allow for the choral singer to have more opportunity to make, make collective decisions on their own, where we as conductors, we have, you know, we have decisions made for sure, but we also leave room for what else is out there or how can these decisions be kind of um, caressed or changed or altered a little bit by the choir. And maybe that's, maybe that's a, a better and more artistic idea. And those moments, I think, also bring us together as humans. And that's why we miss each other so much right now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I hear that uh, you you tell us before that uh, the conductor should, you, you uh, must show the orchestra player how to do what you want. So uh, I want to ask is, what do you think if the choir conductor is be able to show how to sing? Yeah, to be sort of clear and, and to have the choir responding uh, in a healthily and artistic manner. Is that what you're sort of getting at there? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to make sure I understand the question. So you're talking about how to, how to get the choir to sort of respond um, oh, in an artistic and clear way? Yeah, uh, uh, I mean that uh, you say before that when you uh, conduct the orchestra and you want mm -hmm. the player to, to play uh, what you like what in, in, your, in your mind, so uh, is, is the same way with the choir conductor to show the singers how to sing the some part so the uh... yeah yeah you know i i think it's you know it's it's obviously very complicated and, and it's an art form so we don't have a direct science to it but I, i again i think for conducting choir it's it's about it's about not doing uh too much we can oftentimes, oftentimes be too forceful with our gesture um and and uh and that's going to create maybe tension in the voice so we have to coach that coach against that Uh, mm -hmm. but when the, when the music is, is great, it, it tends to be easier to conduct, uh, in a way when the music is maybe not as good, it, it's more, it's sometimes more mm -hmm. difficult. So I think choosing great music is always, is always paramount, uh, for sure. Uh, and then certain, in terms of like the practicality of conducting, I would suggest, uh, sort of a low deep seated conducting position where the, the hands and the arms are are low, uh, uh, sort of, sort of where where we breathe from, rather than sort of a high uh, a high hand position, which is going to relate to the singing uh, very well, um, and then and then just just sort of trying to do do a, as little as possible. There's this quotation that I always sort of uh, misquote, but I'll do my best now, and it basically says uh, that that uh, perfection or, or artistry is achieved not when there is nothing left to add, but rather when there is nothing left to take away. So if you think of a sculptor starting with a block of stone, they're not adding yeah. things to the stone. They're continually taking away. They're taking away what's not needed. And when they've taken away everything not needed, then they have their sculpture. And I think conducting and choral singing is the same thing, where it's not a matter of let's okay, let's add this, let's add that, let's add this, let's add that. It's about what can we, how can, how can we get to the true simplicity of all of this, and how can we truly experience uh, artistry through removing what's not necessary and make this as sort of simply profound as we possibly can. Does it make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. So, uh, 
maybe uh, we can read the question from the viewers yeah that would be be lovely i was, i uh <laughs> am uh, planning to be in indonesia this this fall uh and uh, i uh, just love the people there and i'm are so excited to see more of you uh, uh here i guess in september october so uh would love yeah. to hear from a few of the of the viewers here <laughs> yeah yeah there is one viewers that ask you uh jamie music 707 Hi, may I know how do you teach choir online? There are so many unknown in, com- in the coming future. Could you predict how can we connect back to the reality with what we are doing right now on the internet? Sure, yeah, that's a, it's a tough question. It's on all of our minds right now. Uh, I will say in our circumstance in the U.S., we're about to go into our summer, our summer break. So for about two or three months, uh, we, we're just normally, uh, we, this is when, when our schools are all out and many choirs are inactive during this time. So for the American choral scene, I'm really hoping that people can, can really chill and relax and stop being on the internet so much, uh, sharing sort of uh, pure speculation at this stage uh, and wait two months before we, and, and until we know more about our current situation and then make some decisions. Um, this pandemic is evolving so much right now. We really need to be making decisions two weeks at a time and hardly more. Um, I, I think for other parts of the world that are on a different kind of calendar, uh, you know, it, it's going to be specific to each and every ensemble and each and every singer. Uh, the, uh, some of the best things I think people can do is exactly what the Bandung Choral Society is doing right now, where you're having uh, guests in from all other parts of the world to discuss the choral art and to discuss um, you know, music making and their scenarios, uh, to talk about choral techniques, to talk about conducting, to talk about singing. Uh, to, and, and, but you know, it, it's, not, it's not so much a matter of learning about choir, it's a matter of connecting choir people to other choir people. Uh, I think that's the thing that we've got to be doing right now I think the community aspect and connection aspect is right now far more important than the music making aspect. And it, it pains me to say that because I'm a music maker. I love, I love to make the music. Uh, but the music, the music we have to believe will come back and choir singing will come back and it will thrive and it will, it will be better than ever because we will appreciate it so much. I, I, yeah. I think it's not going to be the greatest thing for us to sort of keep trying and keep hammering out what choir things can we do right now? What, what else can we do with choir? How can we continue to learn? And that's all wonderful. But community has to be our focus where we've got to reach out to those that might not otherwise reach out to us. We've got to look, okay, look down our roster in our choir. Who haven't I heard from lately? Uh, whether it's a phone call or a text or uh, a WhatsApp or a WeChat or uh, through, fa- through Facebook or Instagram, who can I connect with and say, hey, how's it going? What have you been up to today? Just something like that. Choir is about bringing people together through music. It's, 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 and we've got, we've got to use the technology we have to, to do that. Um, yeah. That being said, I mean, there are many, uh, there are many books and online resources One of the things we can be doing is listening uh, so much these days. Uh, I, would, uh, I would recommend everybody listen to a new album that we actually just put out. <laughs> uh, it's called <laughs> On My Way. I, I can send you a link to it, uh, but it's, it's oh, just now out uh, for distribution. It's got the Knut Niestat Prayers of Kierkegaard on it and several, uh, several works, several new works of American choral music that I think, uh, I think folks would enjoy. But listening to things, uh, listening to different choirs, uh, doing that sort of thing, I don't know, it's, it's tricky uh, to know what to do. The more I try to do choir stuff, the more frustrated I get with, <laughs> with how to, with it. it just doesn't work because it's not choir. So then I think, okay, community is what we have to have. And we have to have yeah. connection with other people. And that's the main thing. So we have these organizations. We have these, these uh, choirs themselves or these choral societies or organizations. How can we just stay connected with each other? And maybe talk about not choir stuff. One of my, uh, one of my choirs here, 
they get together for an online Netflix party on a weekly or biweekly <laughs> basis, where in their various homes, they're watching uh, something online on Netflix, commenting and sharing photos and this and that. Obviously, that's not choir related at all, but it's it's a community, and that's what we have to what we have to focus on. Great, thank you for the answer. <laughs> you've, yeah. uh, sir, if you've mentioned before that you kind of let your singers expressively describe their understanding about music, music they sing without you instructed them as a conductor. How that you build that kind of understanding among your students? And what kind of approachment did you do if there, if there are students who are not cooperative? Yeah, I love that question. I wish I had my choir here to answer, uh, answer that <laughs> for you because it's, it's, um, it, it, that's something that I think they would, they would answer uh, maybe better than I could. Um, I will say, I, I think it's, it takes a real degree of trust uh, and it takes a real um, uh, a heightened sense of kind of musical risk where you have to sort of just let over control. Uh, as conductors, sometimes we can naturally uh, sort of seek more control than we probably need to have. Uh, I go back to the to some root words of the word conductor sometimes. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure the exact accuracy of this, but it's a two-part word. It has Latin origin. And then, of course, Italian as well. Conducare is sort of the word that, that, uh, that is related. C-O-N-D means to lead. C-A-R-E means to care. Uh, so to lead and to care is the role of the conductor, both about the music and about the person, about the singer. So if we're really leading and caring, that means we're going to be getting other people to to sort of lead and care themselves. So uh, one of the things you might do to start out, uh, you know, as a, a song might be to, to sing the melody, to sing the, the, the line, uh, the main line of the piece, whether it's a folk song or a newly composed piece, but just let's, let's all get together and see what this melody looks like. And then we're just sort of singing back and forth and we're listening to each other. And I'm not necessarily even conducting too much. We're sort of just having a sing. And then we get to know this melody, and it's in our heads, in our, in our ears, and in our hearts. And then, then maybe the piece responds to that melody. Maybe it's got a fugue or something. There's a counter line. Maybe we all take a look at that counter line and see how that responds. And then ask ourselves, can we still hear that melody? Can, is that still a, a, part of, um, a, a part of the presence here? Uh, and how is this sort of interacting and interplaying? And we're all listening the entire time. And then maybe there's a, there's a third part that responds, or a fourth part, or a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth part yeah. that responds to this in some way. And so we're all kind of familiarizing ourselves with all of these parts, uh, all the while listening. We're trying different things. I'm sort of reducing the amount of gesture that I'm using and, and just sort of letting them be and letting them grow and, and letting them listen to each other and respond. And then some, sometimes I'm offering cues but the less I do, the more independent they have to be. So one of the things we're, 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 our, our role is, as conductors, is to, is to build musical independence and not have people relying on you uh, so much all the time. So I might give some initial cues, like, you know, right, right off the bat. But then I'm going to try to dial back from that and let them be independent. And they're not, they're not going to be in trouble when, you know, if they miss something. <laughs> but they're also going to know not to expect that I'm going to give every single cue at every single moment. I might be there to assist, but it's going to be their role or their job to be independent and know their stuff. Um, I, you know, I don't know that I've ever had anyone not cooperative with this kind of idea because it's, it's done with a certain gentleness and a certain gentle spirit too, uh, where it's not that I'm, I mean, it's, it's empowering and encouraging and, and kind. It's not, I'm not. I'm not demanding they be sensitive. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm kindly asking. Would you? You know. Could we? Could we be a little bit more sensitive here, or could we take some rubato? Let's try something different. Let's. Let's experiment with this here and see. Okay. How? What could that? What could that diminuendo look like? When is it over? I don't know. Let's. Let's listen and find out. Uh, it, it goes to nothing. What's nothing? Let's. Let's try it and see. So it's. It's a matter of. I think it's a matter of trust 
and willing to take risk. Um, uh, yeah, there's so many of my favorite musical memories come from when I'm just barely doing anything to instruct the choir of what to do. And, on, and sometimes on some of the most complicated music. Yeah. So how, how did you positioning yourself among your students to achieve that kind of trust? Uh, I just, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I think, <laughs> I, I think the, the students, the singers have to know that you care deeply about them personally and musically. And when they know that to be true, and it's, not, and it's got to be real, and it's got to be sincere, when they know that to be true, uh, they will do anything uh, for, for the music and for each other and for you, as you would as well as a conductor. So, and, and they know that, and it's not, it's not a game, it's not, uh, it's not dishonest by any means, it's the real truth of the matter is we are all just willing to do it. And I think, I think, I guess the answer to that was, is the conductor has to be the first one to, if that's not sort of a, a tradition, uh, the conductor has to be the first one maybe then to be open and trusting and, and vulnerable uh, to the choir. And then, and, and then that's just the expectation uh, uh, of all of the singers. I will say the audition process is, is important uh, in choosing, yeah. the right, uh, choosing the right singers and the right people to be a part of various ensembles. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, and I think it, it may also go back to the conductor being, uh, comfortable with his or herself, uh, also where, you know, you've got to be sort of solid, uh, in your own, in your own belief and your own self-worth and you just expect people to be curious and to be empowered and to be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Such amazing answer, sir. Now we, yeah. we can move to yeah. <laughs> Let's move to another questions. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's from Ado yeah. Randy. How you manage new member on your university choir, including men's men or women's choir? Are they have private voice lesson? Uh, great question. So in our program, we have probably more than half of our students. Uh, are not uh, more than half of our students are not music majors, um, uh -huh. uh, and so that would mean that they're most of those people are not studying private voice. However, some of them are taking voice lessons, and and we we encourage them to do so. But but many of them are not. So we uh, we try to do our best to uh, instruct you know healthy vocal technique as we uh, as we go, and we have various uh, vocal coaches come in. Uh, to give expertise about singing itself to the choir sometimes as well. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question, though. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And next question from Arin Latumahina. What actually really inspire you to keep on le learning for choir and, and doing music making? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a balance. I, I, I deeply love the music itself. <laughs> Uh, making it, creating art. But I think maybe that's, if I could offer some uh, arbitrary percentages, it might be 49% or, and 51% would be uh, my connection with the people making the music. I'm just so deeply inspired by, by the people in my choirs. Um, and, I, and I try to just do everything I can for them. Uh, for for them personally, outside of the choral rehearsal, outside of the choral concert, and, and, and certainly musically as well. So I, I think it's, a, I'm constantly being fed by these beautiful souls around me uh, every day. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Let's move to another questions. Still have a lot of questions. Yeah, we have so many questions. <laughs> oh, that's great, yeah. And they can be uh, okay. no, anything, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So the next one is, what kind of activity do, do you suggest in this period of time to enhance our musicality? Um, are, are you familiar with the site, Sight Reading Factory? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Uh, I would recommend some of that personal study on Sight Reading Factory. Um, 
I would recommend listening to great choirs and watching YouTube videos and maybe sharing things around there. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend creating small group discussions, say in groups of five or six or seven about a particular topic, uh, discussing, conducting, discussing choral literature, discussing choral, you know, or, you know, choral singing techniques, uh, all of that. Uh, I would recommend getting some choral sheet music and studying it itself, uh, you know, learning other parts to a piece. Uh, I think it's more important, though, to connect with, with your community members. Uh, uh, I mean, there's, there's a good handful of things. I also think it's very important for us. The answer is music. You know, the question is musically. But I think mm -hmm. this is a time when we need to go walk in the woods and we need to go uh, read poetry and we need to... We need to uh, play the violin or play the piano or, uh, or go work in the garden or, or go out on the ocean or uh, you know, go for a swim and, and maybe take a, take a small break uh, in a way uh, because it's forced on us anyway so we might as well use this as an opportunity to free our minds and, 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 our, and our souls. Um, I, I oftentimes, I try to be very judicious about uh, when I work and when I, and when I play. Uh, it's easy as artists to sort of work all the time with our art form because we love it so much and we love the people so much. Uh, but it's so healthy to take strategic breaks, even daily, uh, from, from our work and our art form. Uh, and, and you come back so refreshed and renewed. And even while you're working on not thinking about it, then you, you, you know, it's inside of you anyway. It's part of your subconscious. And you come back and you, and, you, and you think, gosh, I wouldn't have thought of this if I didn't have the last 12 hours off. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I, I think those are some, some little ideas musically. But I think, I think the thing is read more poetry, exercise more, yeah. go, go for a yeah. swim. Do, do things that you might not otherwise be doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, we got so many questions, but I hope we have more time to answer all these questions. Sure. But we don't have much time, so I will ask you the last questions. Okay. <laughs> so my question is, uh, last year you were uh, one, of the, one of the jury in our festival, uh, 8 Bali International Choir Festival. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you share us uh, what, is your, what experience, experience you got there and what is your imp impression about our festival, Bali International Fair Festival? Well, first of all, I, I just about didn't come back to the U.S. Uh, after that festival because I loved it so much. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a family here and I have a choir here, so I did end up coming home. Uh, but it was, uh, it was absolutely remarkable. Um, certainly, you know, Bali and, and many parts of Indonesia have this reputation of being uh, some of the most beautiful places on the planet. I'm sure you know this. Of course, you can yeah. get a worldwide, <laughs> worldwide <laughs> reputation. But what I was so struck with uh, was the, the kindness and the generosity and the hospitality of the people. Uh, and that's what made me not want to leave. It was not the beaches. It was not the resort. It was not, you know, the beauty. And I love that stuff. It's fantastic. But there's a unique, gentle spirit uh, there among the Indonesian people that I just fell in love with and, and can't wait to return. Uh, I, I felt like the, the Bali International Choral Festival uh, ran with great, great ease and efficiency. It's very highly well organized. There's so many moving parts. Uh, there's, uh, there's a creation of excitement around the choral art, uh, as if it's sort of an Olympic sport, uh, in a way. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I loved just the, the, the sort of sometimes over the top celebrations about choir. I've, I, you know, at, at our choral events in Springfield, Missouri, we don't have a lot of fire dancing going on. Uh, <laughs> and, and I was just absolutely blown away. I think I've, I've taken more, I don't take a lot of photos and videos on my phone, uh, but I've taken uh -huh. more photos and videos on my phone uh, in Bali during the choir festival than I think I ever, ever have in the past. 
Um, the level of the Indonesian choirs also blew me away. I loved hearing the different regions of Indonesia come together and, uh, and sing, and certainly the, the, inter the international choirs as well, uh, from the Philippines, South Korea, uh, Hong Kong, and, and other places uh, also. I mean, I, it, it was fantastic. Um, but, uh, I mean, there was that, and then, then the, uh, the sort of educational aspect of it all, the choir's interest in learning and the conductor's interest in learning about how, how they can be better and, and what they can do to connect more with each other and uh, with their, you know, with, uh, with a heightened sense of the music. Um, I mean, yeah, just just just, uh, just truly one of the one of the finest international choral festivals I've been able to be a part of. I, I so appreciate uh, the work of the Bandung Choral Society, and uh, I hope to be in, in, involved for years to come. Uh, really, thank, thank you. you, thank you so much for saying that, and thank yeah. you, thank you, uh, Mr. Cameron, for always supporting us by doing this question and answer on Instagram. Yes, yeah. We hope we hope we, we will have another more uh, in the future to do the kind of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would be happy to do so. And yeah. uh, if any of the viewers out there or anyone else uh, thinks of any other questions, uh, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to chat again. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, maybe if yeah. you don't mind, we can sh uh, send you the, the, all the questions uh, not answered yet. So yeah. if you have time, you can write uh, us an yeah. email so we can uh, give the answer to them. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we can work out something for sure. Yeah, yeah my <laughs> pleasure. Can we do one more thing? Can you smile? Yeah. I, I will capture this, okay? Oh, sure. Smile. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Great. you, Mr. Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you. Tell Have everyone else day. there at, yeah. uh, uh, at the Society hello and yeah. uh, hello to all my friends in Indonesia there. I love you all and it's been great, uh, great chatting today. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Stay safe. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.